Okay, hi, so welcome to this video on respiration. Now, in this video, we're going to cover all of the uh, B2.4. So we're going to talk about aerobic respiration, we're going to talk about anaerobic respiration, and we're also going to talk about the effects of exercise. So first of all, what is respiration? Now, respiration is the way that we actually obtain energy from our food. Now, namely, glucose is what we use for respiration. Um, but it's the way that we get to the energy out of food. You can't just take in sugars or fats or um, complex carbohydrates, etc., and expect to just have energy, right? We need to actually take that energy out, and the way that we do it is using the uh, chain of reactions known as respiration. Okay, and ideally, um, especially in mammals, so in humans, we carry out aerobic respiration. All right, aerobic respiration. And aerobic respiration means using oxygen okay so using oxygen when oxygen is present we carry out aerobic respiration and you need to know the word equation for aerobic respiration you don't need to know the symbol equation and that is glucose all right plus oxygen because it's aerobic respiration of course is going to give us carbon dioxide carbon dioxide Okay, because that's what we breathe out, obviously. Plus water, you produce water as well. And you will often see plus energy uh, written like that, and it will be in brackets. Reason being because energy is not a chemical. Energy is just something that you'll get out of the reaction, but it's not a chemical, so you can't write it in a chemical equation without putting it in those brackets. Now, where does respiration happen? Well, it occurs in the cells, okay? It's not some. It's not like uh, it just happens in the lungs. It occurs in almost all of the cells inside your body, all right? The lungs are the way that we get oxygen, but then the blood ships that oxygen around to the rest of the body, and so all your cells, um, or most of your cells, need to use that for respiration. And that is carried out in the organelle known as the mitochondria, okay? The mitochondria. Right, that is the site of aerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is different, it doesn't happen in the mitochondria, but aerobic respiration is carried out in the mitochondria. All right, and so as a result of that, if you see a cell, okay, with a lot of mitochondria, okay, so I'm going to say more mitochondria in a cell equals a more active cell. All right, the cell is going to be using more energy if it has more mitochondria, and that's why it will have them. If the cell does not need to use a lot of energy, then it won't have many mitochondria because there's no point in having a load of them in there. All right, so the amount of mitochondria tells you about the um, the activity of the cell, tells you whether it's really active, whether it divides a lot or, or it has to grow, or whether it doesn't. And so that brings us on to why we respire at all. Okay, so reasons. Reasons for respiration okay why do we need the energy right it might seem like an obvious question but there are more than one there is more sorry more than one answer all right and basically living cells they need to grow and they need to divide okay so growth and division okay when we say cell division, it means producing um, multiple cells from a single cell. That requires energy because you need to produce different molecules to cause that to happen. And growth obviously requires energy as well. All right, we also need to use energy to make large molecules. For example, if you eat a load of sugar, okay, a lot of that sugar will be stored either as fat or as a complex carbohydrate, and that's by um, adding together a load of those small sugars, okay? So building large molecules, large molecules. Okay, you could also uh, use energy to break down large molecules, right? If you have a load of um, complex carbohydrates, for example, glycogen in humans, You'll need the sugar, because obviously glucose is used for respiration. You need to break it down. And so it's also used to break down large molecules. Large molecules. All right. A more obvious one in animals is for movement, right? Our muscles uh, need to move, obviously, when 
well, all the time basically, because our heart is going to be beating all the time. We're going to be breathing, so our diaphragm is going to be moving. Uh, and obviously, when you are moving around yourself, your muscles are using energy. Okay, so movement of muscles. Okay, that requires energy um, as well. And also, lastly, and this is why uh, mammals, um, things which are warm blooded, need to eat a lot more regularly, a lot more frequently than something cold blooded like a snake. Okay, because a lot of the time, uh, a lot of the energy, sorry, that you um, produce from your food is used to keep your blood at a certain temperature. So maintaining body temperature, all right, maintaining body temperature. Well, that requires energy in order for that to happen. And so that's another reason why we need to respire. All right, so that's fairly simple. Let's move on now to exercise and uh, the effects that exercise have on our body. All right, so I'm gonna write a heading here of exercise. Okay. Now, during exercise, we're going to be using more energy than we would be if we weren't exercising. That's pretty obvious, all right? Now, we're going to be using the glucose that we have in our blood, but also our muscles store glucose as something known as glycogen, all right? So we're going to be using glucose. Uh, let's make that neater. Glucose for energy. This is terrible. For energy. There we go. And also glycogen broken down down to form glucose in the muscles all right now as a result of uh, muscles needing more energy they're going to be using more glucose breaking down more glycogen but from the equation for respiration you'll remember that it's glucose plus oxygen and so you also need more oxygen okay a greater oxygen supply i'm just going to write o2 which stands for oxygen supply needed Okay, so you need a greater supply of oxygen uh, to the muscles to allow them to continue to respire. If you run out of oxygen, then you'll start respiring anaerobically, which is something we're going to look at in a minute. But that's not ideal. Aerobic respiration is much better for us. Um, and so we're going to uh, do that for as long as we can before we need to respire anaerobically. All right, so how does our body respond? Okay, so responses. Our body has to change the way it's functioning in order to meet this uh, demand. What happens is our heart rate will increase. Okay, heart rate increases, which increases the supply of oxygen, well, the supply of blood mainly, to your muscles, but the blood obviously is carrying the oxygen. Okay, so you get an increased supply of oxygen uh, to your muscles, and so they can continue to respire. Also, your arteries um, they dilate and dilate means just to get wider so they're carrying more blood okay and that means that we're going to get more blood supplied to the uh, muscles as well okay so I'm going to say that the arteries dilate okay which increases blood flow all right now of course uh, that's how we get more oxygen uh, to the muscles, all right, from the lungs. But how do we get more oxygen into the lungs? Well, we start breathing faster and we start taking deep breaths, okay? So breathing rate increases. Increases. Okay, as does the depth of breath, all right? So... You breathe deeper and you breathe faster and that increases the amount of oxygen that can be obtained from the lungs and then supplied to the blood from your lungs. Now it also has another function because when you're breathing, you're not only breathing in oxygen, you're going to be breathing out carbon dioxide. 
And remember, carbon dioxide is the product of respiration, and we need to get rid of that, okay? We need to get rid of the carbon dioxide because it's waste, we don't want it, and we need to obtain more oxygen. So breathing faster means that more oxygen is coming in and more carbon dioxide is leaving, okay? So that it's sort of a double-edged sword there. All right, now something else that you need to know um, is that uh, the efficiency that all of this occurs in your body, all right, increases as you get fitter. So with exercise, um, it means that you can supply more and more oxygen to your muscles, whereas someone who's not fit won't be able to supply as much. And it means that your heart rate um, is able to increase and decrease more efficiently. Um, and it also means that your resting heart rate, okay, is going to be lower when you're fit than when you're not. Okay, so I'm going to write here. Uh, fitness okay and we're going to compare some factors so the first one will be heart rate heart uh, that's awful again sorry for that okay heart rate okay and these will be lower for the fitter person Okay, and that includes resting heart rate and it includes heart rate when you're exercising because it means that the um, the muscles are obtaining oxygen more efficiently. The heart doesn't need to pump as fast, which puts strain on the heart, and so you have a lower um, heart rate. The same is true for the breathing rate. Okay, breathing rate. That is also going to be lower for the fitter person. All right, and for the same reasons, if you're breathing in oxygen and you're a fitter person, it means that you, your body is more efficient at obtaining the oxygen into the blood um, and getting the oxygen to uh, the places it needs to go. And therefore, your breathing rate does not have to be as fast in order to obtain the same amount of oxygen, okay? Because breathing really, really fast and your heart beating really, really fast is not healthy. Um, and the lower they are, the better. And lastly, recovery. Okay, so recovery. So recovering back to your resting heart rate and breathing rate, when you are a fitter person, that will be quicker. So if you think, if you go for a run and afterwards you're exhausted and you're panting, you're going to breathe fast for a long time after um, you've completed the run. Now, as you get fitter and fitter and fitter, the time it takes to get back to normal, as it were, to recover, uh, is shorter. So it's quicker. So the recovery time. Recovery time. And I'm going to put in brackets here, return to resting. I'm going to put HR and BR for heart rate and breathing rate is, uh, and I'll put that in brackets, sorry, is shorter. Okay, so it's quicker. All right. So lastly, let's have a look at anaerobic respiration. And so this is what happens when uh, you don't have enough oxygen or your cells haven't got enough oxygen um, in order to carry out respiration as fast as they should be. And so anaerobic uh, respiration, and that means without oxygen. Okay. Now, importantly, anaerobic respiration is not as efficient as aerobic respiration. Okay, Sorry, but not as efficient as aerobic. And that's because you don't get as much energy out of each glucose molecule. Okay, the reasons for this, if you're taking the higher tier paper, are because uh, the glucose is not fully broken down, as we are going to see. So anaerobic respiration produces, in mammals anyway, produces lactic acid. And the equation for this, word equation that is, is glucose, okay, with no oxygen, forms lactic acid. Okay, not a difficult equation to remember at all. And you might see in brackets plus energy, right? Because again, energy is not a chemical. So it's just glucose, okay, which is a large molecule being broken down into a smaller molecule okay when i say large molecule that's relative it's nowhere near as big as something like glycogen or a protein okay but it's larger than lactic acid all right 
and this will give you out some energy and this doesn't happen in the mitochondria okay it just happens in the cytoplasm of the cells now importantly lactic acid is what causes fatigue in muscles so what causes your muscles to start aching and to feel tired all right so lactic acid causes muscles to fatigue right and so the fitter person can carry on going for longer because they are able to avoid anaerobic respiration, avoid lactic acid buildup, which means that their muscles are staying fresh and not as tired for a lot longer. Okay, whereas someone who's not fit, their muscles will start to cramp up, they will start to get really tired and, and they'll start to hurt because lactic acid is building up really quickly. All right, lastly, uh, there's something known as oxygen debt, and this, is on, this only applies to the higher paper, so if you're doing foundation, don't worry about oxygen debt. Okay, oxygen debt, and debt as in you're paying something back, right? And basically, oxygen debt is uh, the reason why we have a recovery time after exercise, okay? So I'll just put an underline here, oxygen debt. All right, now after we've finished exercising, because we're still recovering, okay, you're breathing heavily uh, and your breathing rate is still high, the reason for that is because you still have lactic acid, okay? So lactic acid, acid uh, must be broken down into carbon dioxide. Right, I'm just going to write CO2, but it's carbon dioxide and H2O, water, all right? Just like in aerobic respiration, that's what you produce. The lactic acid can be broken down um, using oxygen. Okay, so this requires oxygen. Okay, oxygen. Okay, the amount of oxygen that it takes in order to break down this lactic acid is known as your oxygen debt. All right, and so the larger the oxygen debt and the more unfit you are, the longer it's going to take to turn that lactic acid into CO2. Okay, so large oxygen debt let's just neaten that up large oxygen debt plus um, less efficient uh, usage of oxygen uh, that's terrible of oxygen I don't know what's going on here equals longer recovery time okay and so the fitter person will have a smaller oxygen debt and they will be able to get rid of their oxygen debt more quickly okay and that is why you will see that often you get these questions in a in a um, in a graph and let me just quickly draw one out for you all right and so if you had something like this you've got breathing rate on the y-axis okay and you've got the time on the x-axis now you can see that uh, at this time here, I'm not going to put numbers in for now, right? That's when they start exercising because the breathing rate starts to increase, okay? Uh, and you can see the green uh, line, the breathing rate carries on going up and going up and going up, uh, and it keeps going. And around about here, around about, if this was a straight line, around about there, that's when the exercise is going to stop, okay? So you can see that the blue line has reached its... Uh, maximum there and it's flattened off the green line carries on going up and up and up and up and up and then when exercise stops okay the blue line is a lot quicker at getting back down to its original than the green line is okay and that's because the blue line represents someone who is fit okay and the green line represents someone who is less fit Okay, you can see that because the starting breathing rate as well is lower for the blue line. That's a key indicator. And then the amount of time it takes uh, to reach the maximum breathing rate uh, is longer for the unfit person. And the time it takes to recover is longer for the unfit person. That is a result of the oxygen debt and the efficiency at which that they can get rid of it. Okay, and that is about it. So I'm going to stop there. That's everything you need to know uh, for the respiration part. So that's B2.4. Um,
And if you have any questions still on this, then please do feel free to comment them in the box below or send me a direct email using the link. Um, but I look forward to seeing you in the next one.